Yo, people always ask me what kind of frames I'm rocking. I've been rocking Caddis for a couple years. They make amazing progressive readers, which I wear. Also, they make sunglass readers, anti-glare, anti-smudge coating, anti-scratch, and anti-aging. That's why I look mad young when I wear them. I'm just kidding. Um, but they make amazing frames. Caddis, so stoked to have you guys part of the podcast. You can go to caddislife.com slash Toby10 and get $10 off your first purchase. Stoked. Thank you, Caddis. Welcome to the fam. Yo, yo, Liquid Death. Thank you so much for hydrating all my guests. Taking care of me and my family and my friends. Love your water. Love your brand. Love what you stand for. Love you give back to the community. If you want to learn more about Liquid Death and how it started, listen to episode 115 with the co-founder, owner, and creator of Liquid Death, Mike Cesario. Just a punk rock skateboarding kid from Delaware with a dream. It's an incredible story, incredible journey. They have now blessed me with my own code. So if you go to liquiddeath.com slash Toby, you get free shipping on any items you order from liquiddeath.com. Thank you so much, Liquid Death. Death to plastic, murder your thirst, stay hydrated. You know h tool saves lives. Check, check, microphone check. Welcome to the One Life on Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morse. Today I have four international recording artists, amazing front men from all different walks of life. I said four. <laughs> we got Derek. We got Derek Sepultura. What up? We got Dan from Sharp Shock. G'day. And we got Wes from Cold Cave Hello. in the house. Part two for Wes. Part two for the people who haven't heard the first one that's coming out with these coincide together uh-huh. back to back. Anyway. Oh, Dan Smith, yeah. thanks for being My, here. Mine's out already, so I'm just I'm just This is your part two. Old yeah, news. Well, I'm gonna plug yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yo, before we get into a conversation, I wanna plug a couple <laughs> things that oh obviously God, Dan Smith just dropped a book. He oh, just dropped a book. Congrats. Thank he you. Just dropped the book. Thank Slow you. clap. Yeah, it's called, it's called "You'll Never Walk Alone," and it's sneaker tattoos. And Beyond the Streets were involved, and Roger Gassman helped you with this book. That's and true. And it's a beautiful book, and I'm lucky to have two of my tattoos in there. Well done, my. You know what? You well were done. you were number one. I was number one in there. Ooh. The first shoe I ever did was on you. Was Look the at Air, you. was the Air Max One? Uh huh. Awesome. Thank you, man. Uh-huh. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And it just it just took off. Just the sneaker tattoos. Yeah, I guess the glory of Instagram when you put something out, like someone's gonna see it and maybe wants the same thing, right? Yeah, so, um, I did that, and then a couple people hit me up, and before I know it, I mean, this, when was that? That was probably six or seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I think I've probably done close to two hundred shoes. Oh my god! And what's the most like which, randomest geez. shoe you've done? Besides, um, I, I saw a few. Uh, I guess a Croc. I saw Birkenstock or a Croc. I've done there? a Croc. Croc, 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 Croc is the hot most, now. Uh, the is most it? requested shoe. What is? Well, most requested. Like, have I done a Croc? But are you? I, I've literally only done one. Okay. okay. So, but Crocs are I back. Mean, I mean, is it like kind of like a Tasmanian? We're like, I'm not doing Croc. <laughs> no, I'll do it. I'll do it all. <laughs> I'll do it all, man. Okay. Yeah, Crocs the are weird, back. The, the weirder, okay. the better. You know, I've done clogs. Have you done like track shoes? Are you partial to Crocs because where you're from? <laughs> Ooh, uh, you know, That's I've been cool. gone a long time now, Wes, so I, I, I'm not partial. Um, <laughs> flip-flops I have done a lot of, which I probably am more partial to flip-flops than, than uh, Crocs. My wife would divorce, okay. my wife would divorce yeah. me if I got a flip-flop tattoo. Come on, man. <laughs> she hates me wearing flip-flops. Really? It's just That's something. such a Brazilian thing, though. I mean, yeah. the flip-flops. It, yeah. It, is there, is there oh, a sneaker yeah. you wouldn't do? Nah. Did you do the Back to the Future one I saw? Yep. That's sick. Yep. That's sick. And I see like Vans is really popular. Absolutely. Vans is the most popular, I'm guessing, because of where I'm at. Oh, South yeah. Southern okay. California. But, you know, I, I did do, um, remember the Goonies, Data's shoes with the, the oil slick that comes out okay, the back? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did those. Wow. I bet in New York so, you do like Air Force so Ones or Jordan. Timberlands. Right. Doc Martens. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? Timberlands, maybe? Timberlands, yeah. I Timberlands. still haven't done one of those. <laughs> wow. Wes, right? you ever rocked Timberlands back in the day or no? Never, it, no. It's very East Coast. Imagine. Very East Coast. So yeah, congratulations on your book. That's Thank amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And it's not your first book either. No, it's my what, fifth book, I think. But yeah. this one, it was great because I didn't really have to do as much as I did on the last, on you know, on the yeah. previous ones, which was really nice because it's a lot of work. Yeah. As uh, I mean, def- you and Wes were both. Yeah, Wes that, definitely yeah. can uh, can agree to that. Um, but either way, it's 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 super rewarding, you know, to have yeah. something physical in your hands that you can hold and yeah. and look at. Great it's, quality it's kind of unlike well. anything else, you know. Great quality. I, I, I have the book, and uh, thank you for that. And, and I, You're I most it. welcome. You know, I love books, you know, book fanatic. So Cool. It's a great it edition. It all works And out. it's super original. Nobody's ever done a book of tattoos I, I of agree. sneakers. I, I agree. It's, I've never you know seen I mean? anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I had all the pictures, obviously, because I take photos of all my work, but 
I never. It was. It was. You know, all thanks to Roger. Really, he's. You he's know, the one kind of pushed a, you to do yeah, it. Yeah, he's so motivating. He's always yeah. really supported me, and I, I I love him for it. You know, like I think you really remember those people who just you know they have your back and they totally they always look out for you in that way. So sounds like a hardcore big, song. Big shout out to Roger. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> When's the hard. chorus? Um, <laughs> and then and then Wes, your two your two newest books, right? Is it Year Zero and Ghost Radio? Are those the ones? Yeah, those are. I have them in uh, like a week or so. Yeah, the shipping May first. I checked your website. <clears throat> yep. So those are the most recent ones, right? Yeah, it's the part two and three of a trilogy. Trilogy, yes. wow, yeah. Oh, really? Follow up from the plague poems. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So, so are these poems? They're po- poems, half and half it? with uh, me and uh, friend Mark Lanigan Mark, who just Mark passed. Lanigan, yeah. yeah. Rest in peace, Mark. Oh, he's one just passed. Wow, yeah. that was, that's with him. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh man, I want to check this out. Yeah, yeah he's got a bunch, he's got a, lo- a bunch of books, man. Yeah, and I've put out a few other books of his, and you know, he's got timing uh, is the timing is bizarre. Yeah, you know? it is bizarre. Wow. And you yeah. got the you got the daily Daily Planet bookstore. Yep. And then the Heart, Heart Warren Press. That's correct? right. Yeah. And he's got a bookstore too, an actual physical, real place you can go to. Are you you're serious? Yes. Oh man. Yeah, in Hollywood. I to check that. Yeah. Out. Yeah, Just it's uh, you know Amy's. <laughs> yeah, it's Amy's had it for about. She worked there when she was in college. Just she got a job there, reading magazines on the ground, just killing time, and then started working there, and then bought it like 15 years ago from the owner. And I had a bookstore in Philly too. So yeah, when I moved out here, there's also a used book record store on the same block. When I moved to LA, I had to unload a bunch of my shit just to pay the bills. Yeah. Sold a bunch of books there first date with her i went to her place and a bunch of my books were in her shop That's in her amazing. in her apartment so i was like so cool this is meant to be <laughs> um and then I, go ahead oh no no i was gonna say so you you were always into books at a very young age or you, well yeah i mean i was a weird kid i read a lot and then just getting into punk and hardcore i started making zines in high school and oh, okay right they were right. kind of more personal i guess you know i'd write yeah. about shows i went to and take pictures of friends and mm-hmm a record review here and there but it's mostly just like journalistic writing which transformed into lyrical content and then however long later i don't know how old i am i'm still doing it it's amazing yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's how many books do you think you have out oh i don't know 20 maybe but it's like yeah loose definition yeah yeah, t- yeah, yeah. hundreds of zines it's amazing, handfuls man. of books yeah do you do you ever have any expectation for the books at all i actually don't yeah that's I pretty cool actually because i don't i just you know i gave up on expectations years ago and stopped mm. relying on other people like mm. like pr or labels and I started that, doing man. everything yeah. myself and mm. so every time something happens at all it's a pleasant surprise you know i don't have i'm sure Big I could, goals and just put them out yeah, yeah. So. anytime i had a goal it was a letdown so i have yeah. i have my own personal goals i don't share with people but those are more yeah. like seeing projects through yeah and once they exist that's fulfilling in its own way absolutely yeah. you right, know right it's like when you make a new record yeah you hope people will like it but right. what's the you point of sitting around worrying about it you know? right exactly yeah it's it's definitely a freedom of like um we talked about actually on the first episode is just doing all the stuff yourself and not counting on a manager or a label or a release date and all that stuff and that mm-hmm. that freedom mm-hmm. and that power of like you said no expectations just put it out because you want to put it out and you can put it out People mm-hmm. tend to find content they relate to. Yeah. It, yeah. It, you know, the length that it might take someone to find it can wane, but it comes around. I always tell people, I get emails, I'm sure you guys do too, like, help me. Here's my demo. Tell me what to do. It's like, fuck off. Just keep doing it. Yes. <laughs> and like, yeah. like, what else can you true. say? It's like, so if true. you keep making stuff, people will find it. You yeah. Know? It's yeah. A, it's and zines, I mean, it shaped a, a, a big part of my life and, I'm totally, sure. man. Yeah, everyone's. I mean, it was so uh, inform uh, informing. You know, as yeah. a young kid growing Absolutely. up, I just dive into zines. Like yep. it had such a. Big, that was like our internet, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Find out yeah. About yeah. it was like really. Oh my god, this is what's happening. There, or just some I mean, perspective. Yeah, you, they, they were a first way that I personally made a lot of relationships over here. Totally, mm-hmm. like right. in the nineties, like being able just to have someone in in a zine that we were working on together as a group of friends, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and and knowing now that some of these people I'm still in contact with, yeah, that I was when I was literally fifteen or sixteen, like it's pretty cool. I'm not I'm not really sure right. what else uh, could have you know made that happen. So yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I would call like people would put like their weird 
phone numbers in them and I'd fucking yeah. call them, you know, yeah, and just, cool, yeah, and, and meet them sometimes. Yeah, like their parents would or whatever, you know. It's so, so cool, true. man. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta give, give a shout out to Ian McKay for that too. I got postcards from him from the 80s just writing about, hey, he check out my brother Todd's Outcrowd demo. Like I sent him a demo and somebody wrote it back and, <laughs> and he named a couple songs from it that he liked. Oh, wow. And like that dude's been responsive since day one. Mm-hmm. Like email, now it's emails obviously, but talk about the epitome of punk rock, just everything he's been just the most like off the grid, but also you can pr- approachable and you can just, mm-hmm. yeah. you can call mm-hmm. Discord. He might, answer the, he might answer the call right now. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, Let's find like out. That. What? Let's find out. I know. <laughs> Call him up. Let's see what's going on. I'm so mad. Um, <laughs> just do it. Come on. But just that, like, just like Maxim Rock and Roll, and then ordering oh, yeah. T-shirts or records and waiting yeah, for months. Website, you can't yeah. contact anybody. Then yeah. it shows up like a couple months later. Now it's just like, where's my shit? Like two days later, after you drop a pre-order, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be everybody yeah. wants things now. You know. I mean that that was. It, it, I want to say it meant more to us down there because growing up in New oh, Zealand, yeah, we were right. so far removed that we would just hang on to anything that we yeah. had, like with with the tightest grip you know what i mean so totally. yeah um mm-hmm. and I, I remember telling you before like we would if we knew someone that was visiting over here they would just go with two empty suitcases and would just fill it with every Grab single thing you can imagine and come yeah. back Contra and it was band. like it was like feeding the village you know what yeah, i mean yeah, like yeah. we would do, what, what, yeah i'll take that uh triple extra large basketball jersey of a band I, we I, barely I, heard of just i need that, that fury would, five jersey yeah. to shut down <laughs> exactly shorts exactly. <laughs> For sure. exactly it's true though i remember yeah. like I had a similar situation because when I was consuming it all, when it was the most important to me, I was, my dad was stationed in Germany. So it was just like Stuttgart, Stuttgart, just on a, Stuttgart, ba- yeah. okay. just on a base. I couldn't talk to anyone about it. Pre-internet. My parents would go on trips for his work and they like, go to this record store and like getting the zines that were just free, like, like in a pile of trash near the <laughs> yeah. entrance were like the greatest thing ever. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped talking to someone in 10th grade because they ripped the cover of it. You know? <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, think about like the Max Mark Rose, your hands would get all dirty reading them. Oh, uh, yeah. Black right. ink on your fingers. Yes, right. yeah. 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 Then the flip side had like a glossy cover. I was like, damn. The flip side was like, ooh. <laughs> thrasher, Fancy just it. all that stuff. Yeah. But you guys made it at a very young age too, both of you. Like, you, yeah, you, I was going to Wes ask. was like one of the first people, maybe out of the people you tattooed, is that true? In a group, first yeah, group so, of people? so I moved to Australia in 2001. Okay. And uh, that was, I, I, I was tattooing a little bit before that, but I the first shop I was in was in Adelaide. Yeah. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, yeah, we, we met 2002 or three. Yeah, no later, than, no later than three. Yeah. yeah. And, um, in Adelaide. I was on tour with my band at the time. Okay. It, was, it was crazy because like, I don't know, on one hand it was crazy and on the other it was just totally, it just felt right because yeah, of that normal. connection through through music and stuff. So. We'd never met, but obviously, like I was definitely into everything he was doing, and just to be for me be a, to be able to contribute back. I, I always thought growing up, learn something that you can contribute with. You know what I mean? And yeah. that way, that's how that's how it all works, right? Like mm-hmm. everybody kind of shares yeah. skills and and that kind of thing. So for me to be able to tattoo a whole bunch of people from, you know, especially America, which is where a lot of our focus was, just naturally, yeah. you know. Um, it was it was a big deal, and then uh, literally a year later, we we moved here. We kind of just sold everything that we had and moved. Just went for with, it. with an empty suitcase. You know what I mean? So American dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, what, so, do you remember what you tattooed on him? Of course, I do. It was uh, middle of summer and didn't feel good. What was it? Your summer or my summer? It might have been your summer. <laughs> it was it was our summer. Yeah, uh, I which got it a, gets really hot. I got a decapitated koala bear head that says oh, oh the so humidity fitting. oh wow <laughs> what does it say <laughs> oh, the oh the humidity <laughs> <laughs> holy crap it was brutal yeah that looks and good, he also man. did my and knuckle diamond, yeah which which you've that redone shouldn't look that good <laughs> it was like literally in the first year and i was oh, like wow, wow that's cool i remember that wow. you did that's this solid. we had a show that night and someone went to sing along and they just went <laughs> <laughs> and just cut like just the one spot and just cut it right down the middle. Yeah. Like, of course, it's the know. worst. Yeah, getting yeah. tattooed on tour is the worst, man. <laughs> you have to do it though, just to get. If like, you're in New Zealand, you have to get one from. You know what I mean? I, like, I feel like I've done most of my <laughs> tattooing on tour. On tour, yeah. But but getting tats yeah. on tour too. I've done that too, but yeah, yeah it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you two have had so many different bands and so many things throughout the years of being friends too. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, books just it's everything. Been read. Right? Yeah, yeah, just I, the um, journey. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's weird when you kind of think back now. Like, I just turned 42 the other day, and it's like, 
I, n- I never had a plan ever really yeah. other than to just try to survive and moving here was was um probably one of the most innocently like naive decisions that i think i've made you know what i mean like yeah. like i knew i had to do it i knew i was going to do it but i wasn't really prepared for like anything that was going to come from it you know yeah. so it was it was a huge sort of problem solving yeah. um experience and and still sometimes is but um to be aware of other people and 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 constantly be inspired by other people doing similar things or or, or yeah. different things i think that's ultimately what keeps you going keeps you motivated and keeps you just inspired to just like do your thing um and i had like a a friend my friend ricky from sydney rest in peace rest in peace Ricky. one of the last tattoos i did in in australia was my way on his chest you know what i mean and it's crazy i was thinking about it like doing something your way is is ultimately what we're here to do in life right yes um but i think as you get older you learn you you know there's things that you need to learn of why your way might not always be the right way do you know what i mean like i don't know i was just kind of like thinking back of of the the um like i said blindly sort of naive decisions that i made on one hand it was still following instinct which is yeah yeah you know it's a good thing to follow yeah i think so i think i think that's compulsory even if you sacrifice a lot just to do it your way too in the end hopefully you're happy do you know what i'm saying like the bridges just everything you go through you learn a lot of lessons for sure and that ultimately just helps you keep going, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. What was your goal to live in America? To start to play music? I mean, it was the mecca of everything I, I was know. into, yes. man. You know, music, mecca. Sk- mecca skateboarding, uh, tattooing, yeah. like uh, whatever, cars. I mean, you name it. Freedom. I was interested in stuff. Did you think? Happening. Did you think about? <laughs> did you ever think about New York? New Zealand's California? pretty free, man. I don't know. Did Freedom. you ever think <laughs> of the East Coast? Versus, huh? Did you ever think about the East Coast versus Cali? I still, you love the East Coast I hardcore. still don't know why I didn't end up on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good, good move. Yeah. What, true. to go to the East Coast or come here? To come, avoid. To avoid yeah. the East yeah. Coast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I yeah. mean, my friends and, and, and me, all our sensibilities were East Coast. That's yeah. You know what I mean? Like you loved. E- everything that we loved and even movies and, you know. Yeah. What, Wes, that, where were you born? I was born in Virginia Beach. Okay, but but, but but I lived a lot of different places. Okay. So my yeah. dad was everywhere, man. Dad was in the navy. So your father was in the military. Yeah, and yeah, so moving around, just okay. like forever, right? You know, everywhere, dude. Feet on fire, you know. Everywhere, we're just right. beach boys. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, the Stuttgart thing's amazing. Like going to school in Stuttgart. Like yeah. I just know if from you, playing shows did, there, you know. Did you have to learn to speak German? Was it an American school? Or? It was an American school. I did pick up German. I think you potentially forced definitely encouraged to take german lessons yeah i would think so um, being in the country yeah, yeah but <laughs> at the same time you know it's like is it practical it's like just going to record stores and skateboarding so yeah those sort of have the same language no matter what can you still speak german a little bit that's is sehr good danke ich habe vergessen alles my deutsches total nobody knows it like you know it um, I just had, I just had the honor of seeing Derek perform a separate tour for the oh, first time ever, because we been touring for so many years. And once the pandemic hit, we were stuck, and then we hung out every single day. You lived by me originally. Mm-hmm. We worked out. We, we became really tight. We knew each other from New York, working across the street from each other. And everybody knows the story. But then I got to see you on stage, like in your element. It was amazing just to see you on there and your voice and just it's funny. I was looking around the whole time, like where is Toby? <laughs> we were up top, because right? <laughs> I never really pay so much attention. Yeah, to, like, of course. When you're looking out and the it just kind of becomes a blur. Yeah, and uh, you weren't looking for the haircut. Well, I was. I had a hat on. So. <laughs> I was hoping to find like, Stop. You know, the, like the stadium seating guy. Where is he? Um. <laughs> anyway, it was awesome to see. It was awesome to see you in your element and on stage Thank because you. I know. Like getting hit by a car, breaking your shit, skate, everything you've been through the past two years, right? And to see you on stage with your with your family, it your was brothers. A, it was a weird feeling because it was like this is a home show. It was my first home LA show, living mm. in LA and then doing a show. And so mm. that was oh yeah yeah. So that was interesting. I was like, I hope people show up and just weird things. Yeah, like, I didn't I didn't show up. Nervous. You did. <laughs> That's true. I was banged out from allergies, so no, it's I apologize. Right. Allergies. But it was it was just. <laughs> For, for me, knowing you was as cute. This, I want to say it was cute. Oh. It was cute to see you up there in your Runyon workout gear. Like you got, you got, 
you got you got your Nikes <laughs> running and just some sweat shorts and a tank top. I'm like, dude, yeah. this guy's so comfortable. I, I, he sings in Sepultura. I didn't overthink it. I usually I love don't. it I though. I need you know, we probably would be cool to have like wardrobe. You know, somebody that's like designing cool stuff. For because Sepultura? Like, there's so many bands that I've seen, I'm like, damn, that's so badass. Yeah. You know, like I'm like, damn, they look really put together. And I think it's cool. I just shameful. You're like you're like you're like you're like eat you want like you eat plants tank top. <laughs> so so hard. But then your voice, like just seeing your voice, I've never heard you say I've heard your records, but then seeing you up there like you're like a different person. Yeah. It's amazing, man. Getting the character. I'm so happy. I mean, I'm I happy. Mean, for everybody you. here, you know, we you get into a certain yeah, of course. energy that's flowing from people, you know, the crowd and and, and it just you know, you change, I did, guess. Since you since you just did a whole tour, which none of us have mm-hmm. got a chance to do yet. Do you feel like there was something missing inside of you and then you go back and Absolutely. finally do it after two years and then... I, I became very comfortable, you know, with the pandemic and I was like, all right, yeah. this is just the way it is. You know, there's nothing I can do. You know, everyone is, you know, being affected all by affected. this. All affected, everybody, yeah. And so uh, just dealing with the situation as best as possible and I felt really comfortable with that. I was like, wow, I learned a lot of new things because of the pandemic and being at home and other interests that I like. And then... It was just hard to like looking at videos. I'm like, oh man, that looks rough. You know that oh, I did that. Oh yeah. man, it became further and further away. Like, am I gonna be able to do this? Mm. You know. And then getting up to that moment, but it just all clicked once I started to hear the audience. And then I was like, oh okay, I'm really feeling yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Being in the same room again, face to face with people, and it's a beautiful feeling, like you said. And it just kind of clicks in. I'm like, oh man, it's like yeah. riding a bike, right? And then it's like after you're just like you you feel that um, thing that brought you to love music, you know, that mm-hmm. interaction with yeah. people and just seeing, you know, those smiles and everyone in such good spirits. Like this was something yeah. that I really noticed on tour is that everyone is really just excited to mm-hmm. be there and positive energy and just uh, a great feeling, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it was great. Yeah, it's so easy to take that for granted, right? From both sides, right? You know, from the crowd and performing, and mm-hmm. I know, know so it never will again. Yeah. You know, now I'm just like every show. I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so thankful. Mm. If there's like three people in the room, it doesn't matter. Like yeah. I'm just gonna be on stage. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be good. You know. Yeah. Okay. We're saying that. Would any of you guys, at the age that you are right now, with the responsibilities you have, <laughs> would you go in a van for 23 shows in a row in Europe? Any of you? What, I mean, what, I, what part of Europe? Everywhere, festivals like <laughs> and, every, and Poland, Europe. Germany, Austria. The van has six type of beds in it. Yeah, and there's like seven of us. Oh, beds? Wow, kind of. See, beds. But twenty three shows in a, in a row. I was in a van for most of 2019, so I mean, it wasn't that you were what? I was in a van for most of 2019. Yeah, you were. You know, I that know. Was, but you know, uh, I feel like I learned a lot more from it being the age I was in 2019 than, yeah. than ever before because, yeah. the, you know, the band I'm doing now is kind of a newer thing, so to speak. So it, it's it's weird. Like, I still have the, the young yeah. young mind and yeah. young young heart, but, you know, learning that, the bo- you know, your, your body Why? isn't young anymore exactly. is kind of a trip. But Like, think about now, like, I could do that because I miss touring Europe. I'll go to Europe. I'll do 23 shows in a row, no days off. In a van, but then once you get there for the first couple of days, it's exciting. Right. Yeah. And I have to tell you, like, bro, Wes, I gotta would you, rest. Did you do a van like what he's describing? I might. It depends. I okay. don't know. It's like at this. It's like because if you don't do it now, when are you gonna do it? I know. That's man. the only thing. I know That's it's gonna question. be brutal, but like I once know. it's over, it's gonna probably suck either way. Yeah. So you know, it's a good point. Like, the bus will be like that was brutal, and the van will be like that was a little bit more brutal, but yeah. It's a good point. You know, it's a good point. It's just waiting two years to play some shows and the opp- opportunity to do it. Or I don't know, is it possible just to do part of it? You know, yeah. 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 I mean, it's also think about the pluses though. It's summertime. Do I, lo- I love Europe in the summer? Yeah, of course. I have my yeah, son yeah. with me. It'd be beautiful. Yeah. But I can't speak for the rest of the guys who like mm. want to just have fun too and enjoy themselves and not like you know what I mean. 20, I mean, the, the, the twenty-two shows in a row is yeah, brutal. I know. Yeah, yeah. E- even in the bus, it's brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing. I mean, as singers, I can do a week maximum. Yeah, I bet. Seven back to back. That's. It's like, how much do I love it and how much do I miss it and what am I really willing to sacrifice? Still at 52 what's years old. It's physically possible. Can you physically? Yeah, yeah you that's a lot. 22? I just haven't done that in a couple of years. Yeah, singing every night. Yeah, yeah, it's true. 
and get the proper sleep because sleep's so Absolutely. important. Yeah. On a bus, it's easy. In a bunk. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A, yeah, a van is a different animal. Plus man. festivals, you have to be careful just not just talking all night. You know? Yeah. 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 And then you you're play. not playing. And you can play early in the day. You can play. Everything changes. You yeah. Know what I mean? But it's like, damn. It's like, do I, do I not appreciate it because I'm skeptical about it? It's a lot of shows. It's a lot of, but it's waiting two like years. Rollins to, style, just get in the van, man. Man, he, bro, the, the, get in a van right now, bro. <laughs> at sixty years old, bro. That was 60, the old. That was the 60. old book. Is he at least sixty? Oh yeah, Rollins. Yeah, Rollins. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's touring right now though too. I'd love to see how he rolls, man. It's definitely not in a van. Well, he's also doing spoken word. That's different than singing. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, he's in the back sleeping on the merch. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I can see Rollins like driving himself to the shows. Really? I mean, if it's just him speaking, who's he need? Just pull up and talk. Different. Imagine how we yeah. roll is like when you're 60s. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the next shows you have? I have t- three festivals in May. Europe. S- here. Okay, that's awesome. Here. Close by. I have, Perfect. Uh, Tony Hawk's festival in Vegas. Nice. On May 12th, and then the 14th and 15th is the Cruel World Festival here. Are you doing that? Yeah. It's two days. Oh yeah, I just saw that. My wife wants to go to. I saw the band. We talked about it last time. It's a sick lineup for you, yeah. especially. Yeah, a lot of people we love are on the, on the festival. Yeah, to, where's the festival? Dude, it's, it's at the Rose Bowl. Well, oh wow! So I showed it to you yesterday. That crazy oh, festival. Oh, that's for real. Yeah, yeah, it's for real. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's gonna be awesome, man. Yeah, I'm excited. And then after that, I don't. I think like September, that. playing the Greek in September and Ooh, the Greek. Yeah, beautiful venue. Do you yeah. guys tour a lot? Do you, do you book a lot of long we, tours? Yeah, we used to tour nonstop. I spent like most of my life touring nine months out of the year, and then yeah. I don't know now. You know, I want to. I don't know. Is I, it? You know, is it because we've been home two years? And the, I mean, people say a lot of things going to change because of the pandemic, but there is this thing about like. Like I don't like. I used to love going to the movies. Now I just sit, sit on my couch and watch it. Wait to get streamed. Mm. Do you know? Or like I used to love going on tour, but now I'm just like, ah, or going to a show down the street. I'm, Do I still want to go? I think. I, I mean, I like going on tour. I just don't like to go out for so long. Yeah, I think know? that's it. Yeah, like a right. You right. just did six weeks though, right? That's fine. Like a good that, break in between. Like I have a month. Yeah. Maybe two months off now. Mm. Which yeah. is perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah. Then I'll be hungry to go out again. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. When it's crammed in then you can burn yourself out easily yeah yeah i mean being established though is is definitely on your side you know what i mean like, 100%. like, true, like, true. like yeah. i'm not sure you guys are really care, caring about the momentum or building anything right really at this point like yeah the momentum shot <laughs> <laughs> seven years between records it's like mm, I know. there's still a band it's, whoa <laughs> no it's true like it is true it's true but that's a that's a it must be kind of nice to feel that I was talking to West somebody before the pod. Like it just, you know, some people have to go on tour, and we, I was like that at one point when I was younger. This yeah. is all I wanted to do, mm-hmm. and this is all I had to do, and this is what I, how I survived. Mm-hmm. But now when you get older, and you don't have to do that. It's cool to be able to like, I want to do those shows or pick that fest, not pick it, but yeah, I know you. Yeah, mean. right. Yeah. I think that's like where I'm at now. I just want to do things. I don't know, like the, those sort of like in between shows that can be a little demoralizing. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather. Uh, <laughs> Like some uh, random club on a Tuesday night like, between the festival. I'll, have to I'll, do it. I'll just skip those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would love to skip those too. <laughs> right. Those are brutal. I mean, those are I know brutal. Exactly but what there's so many legit. Very humble. You're like, oh, here yeah, we yeah. I, yeah. Saw, I, I saw some meme the other day. It said like, we all know you can't headline on a Tuesday. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Especially in Europe, dude. In between those festival weekends, you're playing some random oh. spot. Yeah. You've been with us. Like, yeah. 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 Like on a Monday or Tuesday night. It's just Man. Like, playing at like Trixie's bar. It's some random right. shit like East Germany or some random spot, man. Right. I know. Like, I, it was and it's just po- Poland. The, remember that show in Poland? It's just us in the crowd supporting each other. It's rough, <laughs> man. But like, they gotta fill in those dates. But and then, yeah, and, yeah, and then the very that. next day, it's like eight thousand people at a festival. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. It's mind fog. But yeah. I do love that Europe. It's I love rad. that. Oh man, that was man. the greatest tour I think I've probably been on. Wow, uh, all through Europe. It was cool. H two O sharp shock and battery. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was. We all split the double decker bus. But like oh, swimming man. every day and riding yeah. jumping in scooters all over the place. Vacation. Scooters, yeah. scooters yeah. through Paris. What year was this? A couple of years ago. Uh, oh, really? 2019. 19, yeah. Uh-huh. Riding through scooters through like Paris, all of us like 10 deep. Mm-hmm. It was just all like fun stuff like that. Mm. Eating like ice cream all you want. <laughs> Find all the vegan spots. Yeah. <laughs> coffee. You know, just the Europe summer. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's I want some to real go. Peter Pan type shit, man. It, it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not right. real life, right? Yeah, 
I don't even know what I would do on tour if I wasn't vegan because you just always have that mission to look forward to. And I look forward to it. Yeah, it's like, I'd just be sitting there. It's like, as opposed to just... I just want all the good spots, yeah. plan them out. Or people well, like it's definitely much different now. I mean, well, as people far as like yeah. venues are just like we have incredible vegan right meals, yeah, which are always eaten first. I've noticed like every time, I'm like damn. Well, by the non vegans, yeah, that's the I'm worst, like, no bro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh like, damn! And yeah. then I had to tell them like, yo, keep yeah. that in the kitchen before you know until. Are you the only vegan member on the whole tour? Yeah. Wow. So dude. all the time, I mean, everybody loves to experiment with stuff because it's gotten better. Yeah, like, of course. What's that smell? You know. It's yeah. Like, mm. yeah that's, that's my shit. That's right? my smell. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, <laughs> is there any more of that? Because, and yeah. also they started to have that feeling of being on stage of being full. Like, oh, I want to have something yeah. lighter. I want something that's tasty. Right now you're coming yeah. around. I like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It's cool. You know, I'm just like, well, make a little bit more than what you normally would. Yeah. Yeah, I got to. Um, I took my son to see Billie Eilish, and the whole backstage was ki- all vegan, and everything said vegan. Like yeah. it did, I knew it was, but for other people, like right. yeah, this is every single thing you walk the catering line it was unreal, dude. So yeah, cool. that's so it's so amazing that how the how they're rolling like that on that tour, and everything's eco friendly, all the different things, the stands they have, and and when you can have your own catering, it's a game it's changer. A game changer. Yeah, I've never had my own catering. I, I've never had it. I've used other people's catering yes. for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tour. yeah. <laughs> But Sepultura has had their own catering, probably. Uh, no, not since I've been in the band. But we've oh, had catering went, with on like, tours. Motorhead, right, right, right. Oh yeah, yeah, was incredible. Mm. That's where everybody hung out, the kitchen. Yeah, it's and like they, Thanksgiving every day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was yeah. like that feeling of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Every so day. Motorhead yeah. vegan options. Oh yeah, That's I mean sick. it was like a split menu wow. every day, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and they go into town. In the local markets, everything fresh. And I lost like crazy amount of ma- weight. No processed wow. food. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was incredible. You mm-hmm. know, just everyone laughing, talking, no computers or anything, nobody online. Or it's just like. What chilling. year was that? Wow. I want to say 2009. Oh, okay. That's a long time. So, yeah. I know it was. That's pre social media takeover. Yeah. But it's just like that whole kitchen vibe, you know? Yeah. Like Thanksgiving and just stories. And, I gain um, weight in those rooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> Have you guys had catered tours too like yeah, that? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's the same. It's yeah. It's, uh, it's Derek described it. It's yeah. like every day, fresh ingredients. Yes. But it's just like you can't overwhelming. Like, and they're just like staring at you. So you got to eat it, you know? Right. Like, it's so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh. Even when you get a good rider, it's like you just end up eating like Cliff Bars all day. Like yeah. in the van, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> This tour fueled by Cliff Bars. It's so true, <laughs> but it doesn't really ha- it happens mostly in Europe more, right? The kids, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, what do why America's not like that? I mean, they don't have the culture. It's just the buyouts. Yeah, I mean, it's a young country. You got to remember that as well. America is super young, and so there's so many things that, especially coming to California, I got to say, like being on the East Coast most of my life, I was just like skeptical about coming out west. So I was like, ah, oh, it's so young and there's so many things that they're still learning um culture wise and i think you know, wow i never thought about that and i can notice it you know there's tons of like strip malls i wasn't used to any of that type of stuff not in ohio though mm-hmm. not really okay I mean, it was more like places not like strip mall. endless strip mall right yeah, yeah, yeah but um that came a little bit later <clears throat> but i don't know it's just like it's a different vibe it's very segregated you know, I didn't realize that about California or mm. certain areas are super segregated. I was like, wow, you know, I didn't realize that there was uh, as much racism that there is, like a yeah. lot more than I expected. I was very naive to that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. But I still know where else I live besides California. I don't know what's. Else... I love it. You know, I love it, but there's, you know, there's things that I just didn't know about. It. How long have you lived here now? It's been about four years. Right. But. Two of those years, I was sure. traveling. Okay, and then, and then two were locked, locked down. Like, yeah, okay, I'm here. Mm. Yeah, just, but you came from Brazil to here, though, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's that's a totally different world. True, true. You but know, I, yeah. I mean, during the pandemic, was that was literally the first time that I've really felt like I'm home. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, like, yeah. like I've been here 18 years now. Oh wow. God. So it's the longest I've lived in any country. Yeah. I was born in England. I lived in New Zealand, Australia, and like. 
I just I just bought this new car that I've fucking wanted my whole life. It's basically. beautiful, by yeah. the way. But a big reason for that was because I came to the realization, like, wow, like I'm I'm here, yeah. like this is home, and like maybe it's just something to keep keep me home a little more, you know? Like I I, I love the the break from everything, um, but yeah, it's 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 a trip, you know, mm-hmm. like knowing that you're from somewhere else, but knowing that you're here and 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 lo- loving it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I love it here, embracing it, but um. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. The, I love that the pandemic kind of just made you want to hustle more and think about other ways, <clears throat> not just to survive, but just creative ways. You know what I mean? It wasn't what you used to, because you know, not touring and not mm-hmm. playing music. It, I and, just feel it simplified everything for me. You know what I mean? Like all the stuff that was kind of up in the air in my life, I was just like, oh, cool. Like I had, I had like a real clarity about it, which I'm really appreciative of. Yeah, mm-hmm. stuff yeah. you were scared to do. You mean? No, just, just. I don't know. I think moving here, I always had this very heavy sense of survival, right? Because I'm I, I'm not from here. Yeah. And it, it was always just like this. Well, that this, means, well, that's America will bring that out, that competition. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Um, because I came from a country where I was like yearning to be able to be in the mix with all this stuff. And then when you're in the mix, it's just like, go, 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 yeah. go all the time. <laughs> right. And, and it's not it's not healthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the break kind of allowed me to just like step back, just like think about a bunch of stuff and you know, make some better decisions. Is, and stuff is like being that. in the mix what you thought it would be as far as like in the music world? Oh man. I mean, it's a trip. Like, uh, you know, it, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but this far ahead now, like, yeah, I kind of have a pretty, pretty good idea of what it's all about. <laughs> you know, it's not, not that much fun, you know, but, uh, <laughs> I think, I think, you know, it just kind of hits home. You have to do your own shit. And like we said, you know, like you can't really be, um, like like learn to be disappointed with yeah. other, with other people you know and 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 because you're aware of that maybe make some different decisions your, yourself as as to the way you approach your own yeah. stuff you know it's hard to trust people in the music world man unless you know them for a really long time or i, I don't know it's it's i don't know it's weird man i think it's just easy Depends. to get wrapped up in the like i said like the build momentum chug 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 along like the cycle you know what i mean like oh if we don't it's yeah. like the dangling well, yeah. carrot, you know people, what I mean? People trick you into thinking you're privileged to be ripped off by them, you know? Right. Yeah. That's the that's the trick, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? And that's like the hardest thing to understand that someone you could have so many experiences and history with would just burn you and look you in the eye and mm-hmm. tell, them, tell you that you owe them, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the weirdest thing. And so once you sort of break away, like, you do your own tattoo shop or you do your own records or, you, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, and then like, you're like, holy shit, I can sustain this potentially if I just stay focused. Yeah. You know, I mean that, I mean, I love that. That worked for me based on my particular specific experiences I'd had with labels, with music industry. Yeah. People yeah, yeah. Prior, you know, mm-hmm. the only way, you know, we talked about this before. For sure. The only way I can survive and, provide for myself my family and my interest is by s- with blinders on you know yeah yeah i wish i knew a lot earlier too because we definitely went through a bunch of different managers and business managers who wasn't mm. weren't paying our taxes just all kinds of stuff back there being young and not mm. knowing sure i just want to play music imagine, <clears throat> i always tried to imagine like a world where let's say instead of churches not paying taxes it was like artists yeah let's say all artists <laughs> don't have to pay taxes and there were certain incentive incentives you know given to artists like if we didn't have to worry so much about you know uh putting money towards a living you know you could just concentrate on what you creativity and the craft, yeah. And the craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 imagine yeah how insane that would be like yeah. if you're like okay i don't have to worry about like rent or blah yeah. blah, blah just create your art just do what you do yeah I, I mean that. that would be like yeah tremendous you know yeah. i mean i'm talking all different types of music to like painters poetry everything mm. yeah it's well just, it is artists new ideas that shape the world and make it a better place and mm-hmm. they and encourage change and then you know but then on the other hand i remember like being in hardcore bands and being like fuck this canadian band like they got all this money or like some, <laughs> you know? yeah yeah or yeah like, or, the same or like, <laughs> oh yeah from struggle. the government yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. at the same time the struggle is what made certain artists so great, you, great right because maybe point. yeah without that struggle to survive 
to pay rent or whatever, you wouldn't hustle as hard. Yeah, you know? I want to know. It's true. Like, I, I, I would like to be in that experiment, though, of like, okay, you yeah. just do your art. It's yeah. Like, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, just... well, I mean, New Zealand's huge on, on, on funding. Grants and it's, stuff. Yeah, right, like, yeah. Dude, you could, I mean, I have, like, some of my best friends in a band. They did, you know, 12 music videos and four records, and everything was paid for right. by That's New, what I New mean. Zealand on-air funding, yeah. you know? Damn. And, and, and that happened right as I left, right? So <laughs> I left in 2001, and I'm but over then, here, like, eating, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, flip bars all day, and I'm like, man. fuck. You're like, I love this falafel. <laughs> it's delicious. Like, That's why I like Music Cares. We helped out a couple friends of mine, yeah, too. Yeah, for that. sure. Yeah. It feels like a 401k, whatever, for mm-hmm. musicians, like like a union it type helped. thing for yeah. us. Yeah, right. I know I had, when I was on a major label, at after which is the medical insurance mm-hmm. at that point. But something like that for musicians who are like, cause there's yeah. nothing, there's no retirement in this. Man. I know, yeah. which is sad. You know, there absolutely should be something organized or put together. I mean, I'm surprised at this point there isn't. I know. Especially not, with music carriers. It's strange. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could start something. I might not know about that. But yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying, though. Like, no, I'm, you're, I'm sure it's been talked about a million times. Without a doubt. But I would definitely pay into that, you know. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Heard about Instantly. You know, much more than what I'm getting ripped off on my health insurance. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. I don't know why they would, yeah, it's smart to do that. Uh, yeah. Especially bands you've been around for a long time. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I, I can see that coming together. I, I, I believe that something like that will come about. You know, if somebody like brainstorms and gets. Were you, so we're unionizing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the yes. same. Yeah. <laughs> like the bigger yeah. bands who are like are set for right. lives of millions and millions of dollars. I'm not saying they can't be in it. I'm just saying, but the other, can help. but I'm just, but like the <laughs> yeah. underdogs like right. us who have been doing it for a long time, still doing it, and this is all we do mostly. Dedicate your lives to it, you know, blood and sweat. I don't know. I'm putting it out there. I'm just saying, yeah, like, yeah, put it out there, I and think. maybe even like these big older bands could help. Maybe throw some donations in there. To I don't know something that's what you have to do to sign up a leader of blood a leader of sweat <laughs> yeah then, 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 then you're in a leader of no tears <laughs> no, no, no tears no i'm tears. saying like aerosmith put, throws some stuff a month in there for us i don't know just different bands no yeah. i mean you i mean they can definitely be put together where you get you know um somebody to invest primarily in the very beginning and then it, i mean it, it would definitely work out on both sides you know the investor and also for the artist, of course. Yeah, there's just a strange thing with how people treat musicians, which is I'm just going, why does you know why does this sort of thing exist for actors? But right. it's strange with musicians because you you invest so much of yourself and give so much of yourself, but as a result of that, people tend to take what they want from your output in real time and then just sort of move on to something else. Yeah, but you're not playing a role often. You know, you're doing you're giving so much, but then. You would think people would stick around longer in a way that they do, but they also sort of take what they want from older musicians that you see and then just move on, you know? Yeah. yeah. These people are just left fending for the rest of their lives. Right. But, you know, it's really bizarre. Yeah, there's a lot of bands. I'm, I'm not going to have to say any names that then inspired so many other bands, and, and they're struggling still, and they inspired mm-hmm. so many right. bands, and they right. should be up there or living healthy and happy somewhere, you know Absolutely. what I mean? It, it drove me crazy that during the pandemic that musicians not saying that not, i'm just saying like musicians and touring bands we're the bottom of the totem pole yeah like we, we the word they kept using yeah. is uh, i forget the word uh essential yeah like i feel like music is essential for the heart so it's for people it helps save lives it makes people come together it makes people happy get them through depression and all this stuff i'm like but nobody were talking about that so that with the very right like when they're gonna announce we could play a show remember like the whole no time? they reduced you to like a fucking busker yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like put a digital pot out there and see if anyone throws anything in it. It's like, Fuck <laughs> off. So you know? <laughs> it's like, I'm it's, not doing it, man. It's so true, though. Like, I'm not standing at the train station fucking playing some song asking yeah. for a quarter, you know? Yeah. Maybe we could start a union. Is that, is that crazy? It's is is that union crazy. a bad thing? Like, it's no. crazy enough to it's work. In America, it's, it became a bad thing. <laughs> oh, and the union's become a bad thing in America. No, no, no. Okay. The, the terminology and the whole idea of it became something completely seen as evil. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it was never that way in the very beginning because it was like the workers were to protect, super right. important to protect them. But then they completely villainized it and just like, oh, it's you know very... Uh, it's like communism you know okay and okay just like right. adding all these different things where it wasn't and then just like these big companies are just like fuck no to union they're just like we can't have it mm-hmm. yeah yeah is it more like a uh, independent mm. kind of thing a union is a very there's like, so many forms of it yeah, yeah you know? okay okay i mean primarily the idea is to help you know 
the workers. They're just stronger, united together. And that's what these companies yeah, to not be like, fuck, exploited. And yeah. nobody's ever tried right. to start a music union. I can't believe that. I'm sure it has. Yeah, I don't it know. Gets shut down every time. I don't even I don't know. know. I think it just never anything was followed through with. No one had good enough of an idea or right. yeah. like a blueprint yep. of where it can go. And, mm. But I think it can be done. I absolutely believe, no doubt. Dan, I love especially I, nowadays. I love that you always had like a um, a trade. You always had a skill besides music. I oh, always yeah. was envious of not envious. I, I admire that. You know what I mean? You're a, you're an amazing tattoo artist, but then you're also a great singer and a, a musician as well. And you balance both. I always well, love that. I mean, when I was a kid, like n- no one I knew went to university or like college. Yeah. We all just, I mean, none of us really finished high school and it was just the, what, what you did was learn a trade. Yeah. So to me, I was like, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be a plumber. I want to, you yeah. know, do something creative. So to me, I was like, yeah, tattooing was the, the, the next obvious step, yeah. you know, for you know because my love of music and from the youngest age i would like analyze like bands tattoos and what they had and why they had it and who they got it from and that kind of thing so but um yeah i always worked i worked since i was 13 yeah you were tattooing while you're on tour while you're in a band oh dude i've had like two lives like simultaneously like tattoo thing and music thing you know and um you can always count, yeah. count on the tattooing because that's you doing it, making the appointments. That's you. Yeah. What's been nice is like when I've been completely disappointed or disillusioned with music, I've always yeah. just known that tattooing is there for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's that's a special thing. And I feel I love that. Very, yeah. very, very grateful. Yeah. I wish I could do something, man. I wish I had a skill. <laughs> well, you're doing what this. What do you mean? You're construction. Well, I'm doing this. Thank construction you. Construction and uh, starting a interior union. decorating. Yeah. Now. Starting a union. Right? <laughs> right. I did work for Golden Boys for a second. Yeah. I built the stages at Coachella once. No, I mean so it was brutal. I mean at your uh, your 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 property. Yeah, I own property. I'm property manager now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm just saying, yeah, like, but that's cool. Fix it. Because that's another way of expression, in a sense, you know. Yeah. You put totally your art is. On people. Yeah. It's awesome. Because I remember it, sometimes you're like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that right now. You're just doing the bands. Remember that. Well, yeah, it goes back to that that thought that I always had moving over here was that's the priority because that's what I moved here for. So I never wanted to like discount that. But, you know, as you guys know, it's a it's a bumpy road, right? So like after a few bumps, you're just like, God damn it, like what <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just need a little bit more stability than what I've are there, had. are there similarities between the music industry and the tattoo industry? Um As far as the hustle. I mean, I guess they're the both kind of ego driven industries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. You know? Yeah. There's a saying that you're only as good as your last tattoo. Which yeah. yeah says a lot, you know. I don't know if it really translates to you're only as good as your last song, but there's there's similarities. Yeah, you know, in that way it's of the thinking. hustle and bustle of it too. You though. know, yeah. But you survived it, man. You made your own everything, man. It's awesome. Mm. It's great. It, it came at such a cost, though. <laughs> <laughs> Did it no, really? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's life. Yeah. And Wes, do you have any uh, favorite poets that like inspired you? Oh, that's a good. Oh poetry. yeah, uh, one of my favorites uh, was a man named Robert Bly. He uh, passed away, of course, mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Um, he was, uh, you know, he kind of came about in the '60s. He was like beat adjacent; wasn't fully in that. He was more academic. But he was uh, responsible for a lot of the uh, like major translations of like Rumi and Kabir and sort of old Sufi poetry, mm-hmm. and um, had the opportunity to meet him a few times. Oh, you met him? Okay. Yeah, multiple That's times. Cool. And I went to like a workshop with him once, and it fucking sucked. So I like <laughs> when like knocked on his door to tell him I was leaving. It was with Arlo Guthrie, who was just like such a like a just like the opposite of this person and he was just like this like sort of like fried hippie and the majority of the people who were taking this workshop were attracted to him and i was there and just could care less about him he was just i was becoming more dumb by the second so i went and knocked on bly's door and said um he woke up all disheveled from a nap I was like sorry 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 i just wanted to uh <laughs> say that i'm leaving i hate this thank you for being here I met him twice before at readings and stuff like that, like in my twenties. But um, yeah. And uh, what was it that you were just, you didn't that you weren't feeling? Where you're like, oh. it was just um, you know, this sort of like sixty hippieish idealism that never came to fruition. That these people were still championing, and then you have Bly, who's more of a 
coming from a realistic point of view and he was saying well actually you people failed because none of you were willing to die for your cause actually mm. and that's wow. why nothing didn't change then mm. whereas now you see things changing because people are willing to die for it mm. it just didn't happen until years later you know yeah but um he was right about everything of course and uh just brilliant another person i love is this guy richard brought again who was san francisco beat poet <clears throat> He was my favorite. I found him randomly. He was a kid, just sort of like just beautiful wit. Uh, he made this album that never really came out. It was supposed to be the first release on the Beatles Zapple label, <clears throat> which went bankrupt after George Harrison's like bizarre solo chanting record, you know. <laughs> and uh, but uh, I was fortunate to be able to publish him like a few, ten years ago or something through his daughter's permission, who's also a great writer. Oh, wow, and, um, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know. And then like just my contemporaries that I've been working with, like Lanigan and um, another good friend of mine, Genesis Puridge, I'm in the final stages of finishing their like collection of poetry from 63 to 69. Wow. And they passed away like day one of the pandemic too. And I was just, had just been in New York with him like weeks before mm. that. I was on tour at the time, spent my birthday in February in New York with Jen and then Last show of tour was supposed to be at the Fonda in LA, March 14th. It was canceled two days before. Just sitting around bummed and then get the phone call that they passed that day. So wow, it's just man. like, you know, and just playing catch up, I would never intended it to turn into this like dead poet society, but mm. it just yeah. keeps revealing itself like that, unfortunately. You know? Yeah, you've had a lot of loss in like the last couple of years, man. Like it's heavy, man. Like Yeah. Crazy. Do you, do you feel a sense of like responsibility when you're working on these projects? For... I do. Mm. Yeah. I know how important these you know, these people spent their time and soul creating these things mm -hmm. and just, I want to see them through, you know, mm. I don't know. It just, these people gave me life. I want to keep giving them life. You I know? love that. It's good to, to know some names because I, I definitely feel that it's become harder, I think, to write lyrics. I don't know if this is for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely recommend Bly, you know, right. I would definitely recommend, there's just, um, it will just get you turning mm -hmm. you know because it's yeah. all stuff you know already actually okay it's just worded so perfectly you know that's a good point yeah i mean i, I definitely like when i'm digging deep yeah like, lyrically i'm like oh, i look at stuff i've done like oh man i it's like <laughs> i want to get better at this you yeah know, it's hard to keep right it's hard to keep doing it right yeah yep. yeah and so i i love to be inspired especially ideas come from me at least from movies and books gotcha. yeah but poetry I, I just love when you know the flow of words and, and just how powerful it can be mm. you know I mean, yeah it's if you can achieve yeah if you can achieve on a piece of paper what like your favorite people have done in song it's just like wow yeah. you yeah. know mm. yeah mm -hmm. and that happens sometimes right right because yeah. i know that i mean it was going deep we did an album that was based around dante alighieri and uh, it was hard to go back and read uh, the Divine Comedy. Yeah, you know? it's just like whoa. But yeah, it, it was really inspiring. You know, there was so many ideas coming from. I was like, oh my god. It was yeah, like, mm. we're gonna have to like close it off a little bit and just focus on really, um, just you know, a few things because there's so many things coming yeah. out of it. But I want you know to discover like modern or more modern uh, like poets or ideas of that might help you know yeah i think it's always yeah to have some especially lyrically like writing I, I feel that i've gotten better but i think it can be much better I don't know. yeah I, I rely so heavily on that now just mm -hmm. reading this sort of content just to trigger something right you know right. and often get lucky with it mm -hmm. you know was um was it not pressure was there any kind of weighed on you when you joined Sepator to sing about the same kind of subjects they always sung about and has it changed drastically since you joined the band no, I think we were aligning with a lot of the same ideas, so it was yeah. pretty easy. Like it was never like you need to write songs politically correct and about this. And it's yeah, never yeah, anything like. But that. has it gotten more political with you in the band? I I don't think so. I think there's always been a, a bit of politics. It's just a part of life as well. There's things you experience, mm -hmm. you know, that we like to write about. I think that makes it so believable when you're able mm -hmm. to write about your own experiences, or at least something you can relate to and, and yeah so i think that's just something natural that comes about if there's elections going on or whatever it's it has an effect on you you know yeah but just your influence of being a vegan and writing that newer song in that, the video about the okay. rainforest right i mean they always wrote songs about the amazon but veganism and stuff i wasn't very blatant with it but 
it was like some ideas definitely helped express some of the ideas and the importance. You know, you can dig into it and find those things. Yeah. yeah. I love the recent video about the rainforest and the Amazon and all that stuff you guys did. Absolutely. Guardians of Earth, you know. It was a lot of research and a lot of old footage and all that stuff. It was really inspired by a few just people online. The guy from Ecuador that um, was writing to me, and then I checked out this site, um, Amazon Frontlines, and just looking at their page and their feed, and I was like, oh man, it's like beautiful photos and just the story of all these indigenous people being murdered, you know, and nobody around to document it yeah, yeah. yeah. document it because it's in the amazon right no you were the voice which is why they're doing it yeah yeah and it's just like oh man they're getting away just kind of like the wild west here in america it's like yeah a lot of atrocities going on with indigenous people and <laughs> no law just lawlessness yeah. you know and it's it's terrifying and with this new government um in brazil it's you know it was just yeah. like no protection kind of losing that and so you know, I felt that they were these guardians of Earth, you know, like protecting their way of life is not only for them, but for their children and for the future of the planet. That's their existence awesome. is to make the planet better than what it was, you know, when they were on it. And um, and that belief, I think, is, helps everyone, you know, it's yeah. connected with everything. So I uh, just wanted to give them a, a stronger voice. Like they yeah, exist, you did. It was sick. You know, so. That's great. I, I think the next eight short record, I'm going to start getting political after like 26 years. All the shit's about friends, family, just basic shit. I feel like I should say that. You covered all those bases. <laughs> How many times can I sing about it? I'm so embarrassed. You've been it's stabbed like, in the back. I know that's some old, that's some youth of today shit. But I'm just saying, like, maybe it's time to step up and get more, like, in the, you know, what's happening now. Since we never, but we never kind of band like that, though. I don't know. Just I think it's, it's got to be whatever moves you. you no, know? I don't want to, like, force. If you start writing songs about, like, political candidates, I'll be like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> We need my flip flops. Yeah, get out of here. That. Yeah, but like, sorry. So, so, trying to work out. Yeah, we're never like a political band, though. You know what I mean? Maybe it's time to grow up and like really talk about some <laughs> some real issues <laughs> in my fifties. I don't know. What are you looking for, man? We're doing a podcast. Which one's the new one? I don't know. Don't, don't worry about it, man. Hi, hey, Dan. Get on my mic, man. Don't worry about it. Nobody said you could get on my mic. I just want to say hi to Dan. Max, you have any questions for anybody here? I have a question for Dan. Go ahead. <laughs> How'd you get into tattooing? What? Oh, you may kind of mentioned that earlier. Like, yeah. but, but how yeah. about that? Where were you, bro? You yeah, were, man. You were yeah, I'm late to the game. Did you, have, <laughs> did you have any inspiration? That's the question because I don't think there was a no, lot. Of... He didn't need inspiration. <laughs> it was just in his blood, man. <laughs> Give us a better one. That's a random... Were your parents upset when you chose to be a tattoo artist? Wow. Mm. Oh, I like yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They were. Do you <laughs> want me to elaborate on that? Or yes. Or? Do they have any? Do your parents have any tattoos? <laughs> no, they don't. Okay, okay. they don't. So I was I was I was born in like a like a a northern town in England, yeah. hardworking like steel town that kind of hey. has seen much better days. And so, you know, my my mom was very um, hesitant and uh, yeah, not not thrilled at all with the road that I was going down. Uh, mainly because anyone with a tattoo in England at that point was either a, a criminal or a hooligan. Bum. Of course, you know what I mean. Bum. So. Um, and like her, my grandfather, he, he worked down the mines, you know, coal mines. Um, and there were a bunch of, you know, people with tattoos there. Yeah. But she just, I think, I think maybe us moving to New Zealand was, you know, a, a step for her to provide us with a better life. And I think when I started getting into some bands and, mm. and going down that road, it was like, wait a minute, this is what we kind of know from back home as being not so positive yeah uh little did she know it was uh extremely positive yeah and i sure showed her <laughs> yeah you know and when they saw you on the tv yeah they're probably I'm proud they excited the, the, the telly yeah, yeah the saw telly. you telly on yeah. the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah our son's doing some yeah yeah they even they actually got a discount at a, a car dealership hello a, <laughs> what? a, a month ago because nice. she she dropped my name just randomly as Your moms as moms do when they're buying a car right. 10 years <laughs> after i was on a tv show <laughs> so uh, moms always drop their kids names when they're buying cars well okay, she okay. she she said That's like cute, the, i guess the guy had tattoos and oh, okay there she yeah. was like oh my son does tattoos and he was like what, smith, like saw her names like yeah. oh you're not dan smith's parents are you 
Dude, that's she was sick. like, yeah. I mean, that shows how small New Zealand is, but right. hey, I'm glad she got a little discount. That's that was awesome. nice. That's great. You're like a big deal from where you're from, right? Because it's a small town. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you're the, you're the guy that made it out and I know, went to America. <laughs> made it out alive. I went to America. <laughs> <laughs> did music tattoos. Yeah, handsome. Sick. You have a beautiful yeah. life, wife, and Thanks, tattoo shop. Like, you live in the dream. Yeah. You live I'm in grateful. the American dream. I'm grateful. Yeah. How about you, Derek? You live in the dream? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living a dream. Oh, I can say, I, I, I'll say casually, Derek, Derek's newly single. I'm just going to say that one time. Oh, I'm going to say that one time. Blew you up. One time, dude. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> cut that out, Joe Vision. No, you don't have to cut it. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. I'm trying to check my notes. We cover a lot of cool things. Right, right. Hang out, hang out. Oh, yeah, a couple things I want to talk real quick. Um, do you think we're too old to wear like, like band tees or sneakers and stuff like that. I know Wes looks more of an adult than we look like, but <laughs> you know he does. Like he's like he has like real shoes on. Like he dresses like not band shirts. I'm saying when 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 is it too old to wear band shirts and camouflage pants and shorts? <laughs> Derek's wearing dicky shorts. He's How 51. dare you? I'm just saying. Question. Yeah, never. I, if, I, I if I'm responsible shorts. to own a house, be a parent, mm. pay my taxes, I'll, I can still dress how I want. Right? Yeah, like, of I, course. That's what I'm saying. Like. Is it weird to still rock like a baseball yeah, no. Hat? Why would you start subscribing to something now? You okay. Know? Yeah. So I don't need to like, because at, at one point, I was like, I got to step it up. You know what I mean? Like, I do wear Lululemon pants. Maybe just we wear get pants. some shirts. Oh, man. Oh, oh, you, you wear colourful shirts. You're not Yeah, I do wear bright stuff. Yeah. I'm just saying like, when's it? when do we ever have to stop doing that? Like wearing like band shirts? I don't think so. I think as you get older, you can do whatever the hell you want, you know? You can be that yeah. old guy that's just like, I've oh, thought yeah. about it. I want to say okay. I've thought about okay. it. Okay. Just band shirts, man. I've you got, have like, so many too. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's it, like they just they just appear, really, right? But a whole like life. we go on, we like the tour we went. How many shirts did we come back with? Like sixty three shirts. shirts. I, I will definitely say like, that I want what? to get away from wearing shirts with skulls on it. Ah. <laughs> that I'm trying to avoid. Why? Right. Why? Cause you're because because every every shirt I have, especially being in a metal band, just it's super just like, aggressive. Yeah, my shirt. Just super aggressive <laughs> animals. <laughs> it's like skulls. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> aggressive animals. Oh is, my god. Better. <laughs> well, that's cute. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but so, I mean, like a bear. But the skull thing. <laughs> uh, even our own album, like it's cool. But I mean, just for me, my own personal taste, I have. Too many. Every shirt I pull, I'm like skull. What if skull. it was like an earth, what if it was like an earth tone or maybe a pastel like color with a you skull? rock black shirts. I, I will, I will you go rock, with you look in white shirts. Yeah, I like. I mean, you know, it's like a stand by me type fantasy, right? Okay. Like just wearing white shirts all day. West, you wear band shirts at all, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I still. Yeah, West has a cool style, man. I still buy. I'm like, it's like record collecting. I still buy band still shirts, shirts all the time. Nice, yeah, nice. yeah. Do you think it's weird to wear your own band's merch? I don't. Okay, you want to get okay, you. okay, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Respect. He was tripping out. Like, no, you wear the Sepultura hat. It's pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I back it. You. I, I think it's self promotion, right? Yeah. I don't even, it's, it's a cool hat. Yeah, I just think it's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does Does West wear like Nikes, or are you a sneaker guy at all? I don't think I've ever owned a pair of Nikes. Wow. Yeah. But you were never like a sneaker person, like that kind of. No. Did you rock a youth crew look back in the day? Yeah. Sick yeah. champions and stuff like that. Mm, no, just like band t shirt okay. shorts. Yeah. Yeah, camo, you you, you are you are the something adjacent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you are the one of the originators of wearing the unassuming T-shirt, like like yeah, yeah. like like, like in a hardcore we're, band. wearing T-shirts of like bands that, that maybe more than Obscure. most of the crowd wouldn't. It's not have heard it's, of. it's not yeah. just a Smith shirt. It's some other. Maybe he's wearing a Baja shirt like in the nineties on I don't know, something like that, right? Totally. Okay. That's that's one thing that's the one of the first things that I that I recognize about that because growing nice. up in England and my dad was a, a, a mod and he was a, a huge music fan. So when you see somebody in a hardcore band with a Smith shirt on or right. like an in excess shirt or something, you're just like, wait a minute, like that's not the norm, mm -hmm. right? Ma not, maybe maybe now most people like are doing other it. Other music when you back back then. It, it, yeah, exactly. But I I don't know. I I always had like a super open mind when it came to music. So the fact that a lot of different styles were kind of crossing over so at, at the time those. that they did was fucking great for me. Yeah, so he'd be yeah. Yeah, rocking that back then. Oh yeah, OG. That's cool. I like that. 
I remember like getting into the Smiths and like older friends and like punk being like, just whatever, just don't tell anyone you like that. You know, <laughs> it's like, what? This is like harder than you. Like, you know, like, you it's know? so true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would rock. I would rock like Naughty by Nature shirts because we listen yeah. to hip hop. Yeah, 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 same idea. Madonna yeah. shirts, whatever. Like, we're, we're, I loved all that. Yeah, but yeah, but but sneakers is kind of I don't know. I'm too old to be like buying Nikes and rocking, looking at shit online or. Well, you buy them and then you sell them the next I, day. I, so. do. I do. I got a problem. I got a, I got a real problem with it. <laughs> I, I guess we don't really have to. I guess. We, I guess we are grown ups because we have responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? We own things, you know, but you can dress the way you want. And I love that I, I don't have to have, have a dress, have to dress a certain way to do what I do. You know what I mean? I can wear whatever mm-hmm. I want every day. I wear sweatpants all day if I want. Yeah. Yeah. Your way. It's pretty cool though. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I really want to get into what well, I'm going to speak about this for myself is that I'm definitely going to get a hair transplant and I've been talking about it. I'm going to say it on the, on the podcast. I'm, <gasps> I'm not scared to say it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm going to get the hair. I'm going to hear first. I'm not, I'm not scared to say this. I've had this crazy hairline my whole life. People made fun of me a whole life. I really? shaved my head bald for many years. I'm going to say online that I'm, I'm not embarrassed to tell the world. Yeah. I'm going to go get this hair transplant where they take the neck hairs off the back of your neck in the middle of the back of your head. They put it wherever you want it to go. A bunch of my friends got them. I can say their names. But I'm doing it this year. And I'm really – and for me, it's just for me. It's not a vanity thing. It's because my own insecurities with my hairline right. my whole life. I get you it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I'm, I know I'm in my 50s. It doesn't really matter. But to me, it's going to fulfill this yeah. void in my, my life. I like so it. I just want to say it all out. I've seen I back it work it. and it Thank works. Thank you. Yeah. Live your truth, man. And then you mentioned this berry I could take for my hair. Yes. There, there are certain things you can take naturally. But well, I, I, I've seen this the hair plant thing and I didn't know what was happening. I was in Turkey and I was walking around. I was like, oh my God. There's something going on with all these people having brain like surgery. Because it just looked brutal. 25,000 in America and like seven grand in Sweden. Right. Well, there's a lot of people doing it in, in Turkey because they were getting it done there and it's cheaper, I guess. But I know people have had it done and my God, it, it really works. Your own hair. It's your own hair. Back. So it's like not fake hair or nothing. Can right. you use someone else's hair? What? Good question. Could you yeah. use That would be freaky yeah. if I used Toby's. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> would it come out it's like would I have white hair yeah. or <laughs> Gosling's hair how much because <laughs> then I have some bangs like some crazy like 80s <laughs> style like what's up bruh <laughs> no yeah, I th- I'm, I'm I, definitely gonna do it though I, I think it's cool you're doing I, it I think Toby. you should ask you, yeah I think it's please ask your doctor we, I, should, I should embrace it right we support, just, we support you it's one should of I the I document it yeah of course of course it's okay. one of the and you should get a you get discount a big, you get a discount if you document it I'm so no you do ask him Please, for me, if I can get some of yours to my head. Just I guess, one. I, I, I got some friends who already <laughs> yeah, told me. Just one. I got some friends who already told me that they want to go out there with me, man, and take yeah. the mission with me. I'll definitely yeah. take the photos. No, I'm just <laughs> saying, though. So what I'm trying to do is book a weekend of shows in Sweden. I'm going to go out there and stay with my son, hang out, and get my hair thing done. All I know is it works. I it does really, work. I was really impressed. I'll show you some photos after the pod. My friend who just sent me, he got it done recently. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. I just want to put that out in the world, and I'm not scared. I'm just going to tell Extreme you right makeover, you uh, shaved head. I know, but now with all the tattoos, thank you, Dan. It looks for me, that's not my look. It's too abrasive for me. Really? I just don't have a. Shape. So here's the question: If you get the procedure done and it grows back like strong, you can ask me if I'm gonna. Tattoo are you gonna tattoo the rest of your? Yes, head? I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Right now, I you wouldn't be scared that it wouldn't grow back. Mm. No, I, I think once I get get it done and see, it takes like six months, you know. Okay. And you have to wear a hat in the shower. I ran into some kid who just got it the other day at my son's job. And my Max said, talk to this dude. He's got, he took out his hat. It looks sick in the front. Yeah. But 25K in Beverly Hills. I'm not doing that. Nah. Man. You wear a hat. You keep it. You don't get it wet. All that stuff. Yeah. You have to be very. Uh, yeah. Then I'll tattoo the top. I'm not going to tattoo a fake hairline. People do it. I don't want to do that. Like I've seen it. It's good. I've, d- I've done little like sections of, of people's heads and stuff like that. Mm. Like if they've got like uh, you yeah. know, alopecia in certain parts oh, okay. or, or something like that. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, is I was, it vain? I don't know. I, don't, I think it's an insecurity. Have my, I've wore hats my whole life because of stupid fucking hairline. That's hey, and we're, now we're, I have an opportunity to get something that looks really good. Who cares know? if it's yeah. vain? We're you know? all just yeah, trying to grow. You. If you like it and man. feel yeah. better, like I was thank saying, you, it's like one of the few perks of being alive this year is like you get to do bullshit like this. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> perks of <laughs> being alive. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, it's you know it's so cool that it exists. Though. Yeah, like, you'll really you might just, enjoy the second half of your life more. You know. Yeah, right. I can rock. I can rock any kind of haircut. Yeah. Or it looks yeah. good shape. I'm no, just I, I know, but if I didn't have, it's, it's always I, an option. It's yeah, always, it's always an option. that option. Yeah. But if I didn't have, to, now I fuck myself with the tattoos. I mean, you do have neck tattoos. That's 
plenty of braids. I know, but the whole like. I mean, you could you head. could you could explore some haircuts like before you get the procedure though. Such as. Well, I mean, you've you've already explored the stadium seating from a couple weeks ago. No, now now what the, else? Now I'm growing it all like, like a fade. And maybe a, maybe a the, the prodigy mm. kind of uh, look. Mm. That's possible. People, you could do all kinds of crazy shit with but the back. A mo- but a mohawk's possible because it's the middle. You know what I mean? That's true, but mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say my stadium haircut bummed more people out than any punk rock haircut it, it sure I've did. ever had. I had people messaging so me bummed. like, why, why, why won't you make him cut his hair? I'm like, that's what I wanted to do. People were so <laughs> bummed. And then my friends, you know, then my friends who were bald were like, yo, we knew who they are. DM me, why don't you shave down already? I'm like, no, I don't want to. I like this haircut. <laughs> because I can grow it back. It's because I can you. grow it back. I don't know. I didn't want to do it. People got bummed, bro. I'm making <laughs> memes and shit. Thank you for all the memes, the memes out there. The memes are incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Genius. Oh, man. The burns is probably But it's just a haircut, the, dude. What did Seinfeld call it? The chromedomia. <laughs> um, well, it's been fun to have you guys back on here. I just want to have a more convo. I feel like I really got to know Wes on the first episode. The punk, talked about punk. his whole life. You know what I mean? Now I feel bonded with this human. Yeah, likewise. And we cross paths. And then I'll bring it up one more time because I've told the story to a bunch of people off the podcast in real life that he took my wife's back at the show one time and he punched somebody in the face for my wife. Wow. And it was, and I remember the whole story and I never realized it was him until he said on the podcast. And I just want to thank you that for that again. It was awesome. And I told my wife that she almost started crying. That rules. Yeah. It was really and, sweet. And, and we weren't trying, trying to glorify it. What? We weren't trying to glorify No, we weren't. Beating up. No, we had my wife's back. Yeah. And he just snuffed his Somebody bouncer. Was bullying, uh, it was some beef going on. He, and he took her back and he, nice. and he snuffed the dude. And he just, it was nice. Thank you for that. Anytime. We weren't glorified. Yeah. And I also learned that this guy was a, he may look like a sensitive, handsome, stylish man, but this guy was, was a badass too. I got some legit dudes talking to me about, I'd say on the podcast, and like, <laughs> Wes is a fucking, Wes is no joke. Just yeah. back, I mean, probably a different human now, but yeah. I'm sure he fucks by up, they step to you, but I'm just saying, you, you, you weren't ready, you weren't scared You're to throw it out Wes? back in the day. Sorry? Yeah. You were a brawler? He wasn't was scared to. I, was, I wasn't scared to. Wasn't scared did, did, to. Were you, okay, so I was an anti, I was an anti bully. Okay. Yeah. yeah so growing sure. up, were you were growing up were you bullied? Yes, I was really. Yeah. So I was. It was my story is okay. Yes. Because I was my dad was in the military. We okay. moved all the time. Okay. I was born with one hand, so oh. I was always the new kid with one hand into punk rock. And, mm. You know, it was just like, just like the unbeatable combination mm. of, for a bad right. time. You know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and then. And every time you traveled, then, right, over and over again. Yeah, and then yeah. like I just I think probably like fourteen or fifteen, I was just over it. You know, right. yeah. You're and like then, I'm gonna fucking fight. Back. Yeah, like, yeah. Fight. I remember like the first time, just like I was with uh, was my mom. She was visiting someone on some other military base. I think it went from I don't even know where it was, but mm-hmm. uh, just went to the playground to play and this kid started fucking with me and I, I wore a prosthetic arm at the time. Oh, right. right. I was going to so ask, okay. ask you. And I just took it off and hit him with it a few times. Dude. You know? That's what? the most kick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and then I went and hid in a garage, you know. But, uh, wow. So yeah. you took it off and beat him with that. That is, yeah. Damn, that's like, yeah. fuck, man. Yeah. And so now, like with technology, is it possible to have prosthetic Ooh. where it's moving? And, there's, I have a friend. yeah, yeah. So there, there's a lot that's happened since right. then. When I had them, it was like pretty. It was pretty like a big. wood, like dude. Car. It was like you had to use your right shoulder to open your left hand. So you're just like doing these awkward wow. motions, oh you know. And then like as they developed, there was like there was more robotic ones, but they always just felt clunky to me and it sort of slowed me down because I had been used to doing everyday things without it. Right. But um, there's a group at the Children's Hospital in LA that I, I'll go see them like once a year, they do a Christmas party and it's all kids born with similar things. Mm-hmm. And I'll go hang out with them. Like, Is was, there a terminology for that? There's them? several. That's, it's hard to, it's hard to, because every it's like, it depends on which mm. ligature is, you know, it just, okay. it, it just uh-huh. depends. But, um, yeah, the stuff's now is crazy. Like, cause I had one, like I guess in 2012, I had another one built for me because I had a friend who makes clothes give me this like long leather glove with titanium knuckles in it, mm. Yo. and uh, <laughs> I wanted it to go over uh, a prosthetic arm so I can wear it. So I have a arm that goes from like here to here. So I have one like full black arm and. This mm-hmm. arm is white and it's just like silver knuckles, you know? But when I was doing that, you know, you have to, often these things are like 
paid for by like groups like Shriners yeah. and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, you right, know, right. and I didn't have that. So if you have one made, I think I spent like 12K on just having like a mm. basic arm made. Wow. Plus the glove was like twice as much, you know. But like um, now when I go to these parties, there's people in there with like fucking 3D printers doing them. Wow. You know, it, oh, and they just bang them out like that. Well, when know? I did the TV show, I got to work with a, a, a prosthetic company. Uh, I'd like design stuff to, you know, like that people could actually buy. Oh, yeah, wow. on, these, on these prosthetics, it was the we, we, yeah, we did an episode, yeah. and and it was oh, like wow. I think a couple like uh, Olympic runners came in and yeah, and stuff. It was super cool to see the process so of now making it. And then there's just like catalogs full, of, like any sort of attachment you would need. Like here's the guitar one, here's the boxing one, right? You know, and it goes on, but that didn't for lifting to... weight and everything. And, yep, and, and it's insane because it's moving from your thought, right? Like. Or yeah it yeah the, the, so yeah. there's different versions right there's imp- ones that are just like there's wires implanted into you right you wow. know and it's just like that just got like a little too i just got over it because of where i was in life yeah you know mm-hmm. but like there's procedures that people are doing that are just mind-blowing it's mind-blowing yeah it's uh, mind-blowing my sister uh, <clears throat> works at mit and so I've seen a lot of the areas that yeah. they have like the robotics going on and it's just getting better and better. And it's better. wild. It's wild. Yep. Mind blowing. Well, you just um, take them on and take them off, whatever. Yeah. It's I mean, not connected forever, right? No, no you oh, can yeah, take yeah. it off mm. and on, but the power behind it, you know, like the certain ones that are very precise. Yeah. So Stronger than you would to, actually be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. also sure. delicate, like yep. super delicate yeah. at the same time, able to like crush, you know. It's just, a, yeah, I think like they're, more relevant depending on like the path you choose or whatever trade you choose in life you know mm, for me it's sense. like right you know i wanted to see what it was like just to actually hold a mic stand while I was singing you know and stuff yeah, like yeah. that and then it was fun i still have it but i don't rely on it right. it was more it was more like aesthetic based than you know yeah. for any reason i needed to like i found like if i wanted to like tie my shoe it was more difficult to have a prosthetic than to not wow. you know and stuff like right, that right right you know and i found like yeah, actually, like someone you know reached out to me like this last week. Your your old bandmate mm. who lost his arm. Oh yeah. Oh right, Joel. So he yeah, reached out mm-hmm. to me like randomly, and I was like asking him. I was like, that must have been more difficult because I was oh, born this born, way, but right. to have to re- yeah. relearn something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what does he have? Your old drummer. He he doesn't have a, a prosthetic. Okay, okay, okay. Piece, but he um yeah he was a drummer and he he was in a motorcycle accident. Um, but you know, he's, he's, he went through it like, yeah, really, really went through it. But what you know I liked what I mean? about him is like, so he's now like painting, exactly. but using his other arm. He wasn't, I asked yeah. him like, what arm were you, what hand were you naturally? And he had to switch oh, and he's doing yeah. this. He totally paintings. switched and he's doing amazing paintings, mm-hmm. you know? So it's been really great to see that and see the, the bounce back from that, you know? Yeah. And having just to relearn, like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. wow. wow. It's incredible. Yeah. Wow, man. You get, you I don't know what to say right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is, that's, I, mean, I just so, always. But like, this is a. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, no, go on. This is, I think, uh, when you're talking about wanting to do your hair, like uh, this is all comes into consideration for me because I'm like, yeah, I'd probably do something if it was an option that made me feel better about my being, you know? Yes. So it's mm-hmm. like, okay. you have that option. If, yeah. if, this, if this was 20, 30 years down the line and I was like 40, 50 and all of a sudden mm-hmm. I could just replace this, why the mm-hmm. fuck not, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's so it's why something I, you consider if that, that was an and, option. And that would, I wouldn't consider that vain, you know? Yeah. So I don't, th- and I don't think you should either, you know? Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. It's an option. Yeah. It's not hurt anybody. It's going to hurt me. There's like 17 shots you got to get. I heard that's the worst part. Mm-hmm. But after getting my head tattooed, nothing's going to hurt like that. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm ready. Perfect yeah. candidate. Yeah. I, could, I could see you getting into tattoo removal. What do you mean? Just like that being your new obsession. Oh, you know? on, on myself? Yeah, exactly. Like right. start fresh, you know, you'll be at the... At the, at the laser spot every you know regular appointment once a week Jeez. shout out to mike mike dc mike dna and mike damnation ad he works at a place he yeah the removery they did roger agnostic front's head before he went on stage in, in uh, this mobile oh, vehicle yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of the agnostic front show yeah he got zapped it's yeah. gnarly dude yeah i've had some of that it doesn't feel it good, doesn't but... feel good at all so I'm, i'd rather just cover something up yeah. i like to see people black out their shit it looks kind of cool yeah yeah that looks that's cool. heavy yeah. Know, David did both his arms. Uh huh. Left uh-huh. intense. Yeah. Cat. A bunch of people have it. It uh-huh. looks cool on people. I don't. I don't have that much I really want to cover, but I like all my stuff. But it does it cool on certain yeah. people? I heard you can't go into the sun like really at all. What do you mean forever? You don't think about it, but it's, right. it's, it's really totally changing the pigment in your skin, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. You, you go out in the sun for like five minutes, and it's it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, tough. Yeah. I never even thought about that. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Interesting. Uh, I was going to uh, go back to uh, robotics and technology. Go ahead. I always feel that there's so many people. Anytime I see, let's like, do it. <laughs> people see like these things online. They're like, "Oh my god, these robots! They're getting mm -hmm. you know too advanced." I'm like, "What are you?" <laughs> this is terrifying to me. I'm just like, we want to go back to like the Stone Age. Like, yeah. people are really I think they knew. yeah time. of technology, and they're like, all oh, these robots are like running its course. They're like, oh no, mm -mm. yeah, I'm not, oh, I'm not down with those robots. Uh -uh. Those are some evil robots. <laughs> All these robots become the, or, or the Amazon robot that's trying to deliver a package on the street that's like you know like, oh, kill in front of kill a tree it. that They're can't like get by smashing it. They're smashing those ones that deliver yeah. food. They're videos. smashing one that was just hitchhiking, like yeah. not hitchhiking, but doing a trip around the U.S. Uh -huh. It started off like a week of people like oh, it's a little robot, like yeah. notes, and then and it people just responded. Yeah. Beaten to death. Yeah. The well, they did that the with world. the bird scooters, right? Like, <laughs> right. Into what, the ocean. We what town, what these town did it run through? Modes of though? transport. <laughs> wow. People just don't know how to act. You know, they get Jesus. terrified. And now they see these movies and things. They're in, yeah. their, in their mind, like, they're taking over. I'm like, who is taking over? I was like, these robots aren't naturally evil. You know, it's like, it's a machine. You know, it's like, we need to you know, move forward in the future. I want to see cool things but i think we're being held back by people like, mm -mm. oh hell no terminator 2 yeah they're like terminator i saw it <laughs> I, was just like, yeah, I saw it too but it's just like there's so many things i think would should be so far advanced and it's exciting to me when i do see like all these companies especially boston dynamics they have like these robots that are insane doing flips you know their balance and everything and it's just Crazy. It's exciting to see that it can be incorporated for people that were like, hey, here's an option. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. just like something that's getting smoother, not as clunky like you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. And just, I think they're just getting, it's just incredible. You know, I think that can change people's lives. Um, yeah. I've, you know, I've seen TED Talks where certain people are like, oh, we wanted to do this to help people, you know, um, it changed people's lives for going up steps to certain things. Exactly, yeah. You know? And so I think I'm on that side of being very positive of that, but I'm just terrified that there's enough people that will be like, cut it <laughs> down, shut it down. Yeah. Like, this yeah, is getting yeah. out of control. It's like... Wow. There's something, like, inherently, like, wrong with that because it's, like, clearly the idea is to keep progressing for the greater good. Otherwise, what is anyone doing? So just right. to be yeah. against that <laughs> is just, like, it's mind-blowing. It'd, 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 it'd be interesting... If you could get one, but what if it was like strong and it did things like you said, like Dude, you couldn't my, do it with your other hand, like you could. My friend Paul, who has like, would that be scary to have that few. much power? It's powerful. Yeah, and and they're getting quicker, where it's just like, just like right. the, the response. I'm like, damn, mm. you just, it, it's just fascinating because you're thinking it. It's just mm -hmm. like yeah, left hand, you know, the fingertips. It's I, I still am trying to get my head around like how does that work? Well, but, just like just punch through a window, doesn't don't get cut, just take some shit. Just you could do crazy shit if you had like. It's you could save a lot of people. Scary. That's what you do? <laughs> no, I'm just like, saying. I know. See, that's where I'm trying I'm to sorry. get people to understand. I'm like, just saying if you have that much power, like, hold, all of a sudden. <laughs> Punch through a window, take windows. some shit. <laughs> like, what did it happen? <laughs> There's the problem that's right there the with humanity. Right there. Yeah. Oh, humanity. I know, I know. If you didn't have something your whole life, right? And yeah. You get it, and you have this power. Like, holy shit, this is way different than what I had. And now I have. Yeah. It. You I'm just saying, like people can know, reach yeah, yeah. and like grab get, like a fire, you, burning fire. Yeah, of course. You. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, right. It can make you change. Like, oh, now I got now. Holy shit! Now I'm stronger than ever. Yeah, right. And, and then I think about <laughs> back then what they had. I know this now, but you know, in Happy Gilmore, the dude who had the one and kept breaking off. Right. Remember that? What's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Golf, oh, it, Apollo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The wooden one. Yeah, the alligator. Right. We've come, yeah. We've come so far with technology. Mm -hmm. What you're saying, it's like it's beautiful. I think that it'd be cool, like if something. Yeah. Came into your life. It, it, yeah, I, like I, I know that there's bad people out there, but there's not bad robots. You know, it's not. It's it's something. Robots are designed from people, so if people are, have bad intentions, of course. I'm not saying I would rob anybody or break some glass. I'm just saying, just that power, like just testing everything. All I of just, a sudden, I just think people. Yeah, yeah. I just want people to keep in mind, you know, like, oh, it's not uh, guns killing people. You know, it's people killing people. Yeah, use that same principle, of robot. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, but it would change your mindset and what you're capable of doing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah it's, well, it's amazing. Yes. Like I was, I remember, like I have, I was on like the cover of some like medical magazine when I was like 
four or five and it's just me like really it's me with like it's early but it was like state-of-the-art prosthetic then but it's just like basically like two pieces of metal that would open and close right wow. right like it's nothing but that was like such an achievement at the time because like maybe it was just the material they were using yeah. i don't know mm-hmm. but on the cover of the magazine i'm holding like remember like those like monkeys in a barrel thing yeah and so it was just showing that i could do that i was able to hold one up with my left hand and use my right hand for mm-hmm. it yeah and i think it was just at a time where like that's probably like an 83 or 84 Damn. you know and like prior to that i think you were just like shit out of luck you know yeah you know or like yeah like fucking apollo's hand you know right. yeah apollo's <laughs> hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what it was it was apollo's <laughs> yeah yep. fuck man yeah. uh carl weathers carl weathers yeah yeah and then the one guy that got eaten by the sharks that you're friends with yes paul uh he's from australia he's got missing arm missing leg, leg. right and, and he's, he's like a vegan and he was athlete. the one that showed me his arm, and it was just like fascinating. You know, it's like you know that guy that eaten by the sharks. Advanced. I know the story oh, though. No, like no, I don't know. He's vegan. Uh, he's vegan. Uh, he's he, a badass dude. He's okay. a badass. He was in the military in Australia, and um, yeah, I mean, it's never limited his life or anything. But it's just mm. like you know, he's still diving with sharks, and you yeah, know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's just. So inspirational. Yeah, you know, yeah. He's a strong dude. Yeah. Know? He trains so, hard, yeah. Yeah. We gotta get him on here, man. You know? He's LA dude. Uh he's here back and forth. Yeah. But I, I was just like I'm just fascinated with it. I just think it's so incredible. Yeah, it's know? amazing. Like yeah. like uh there's that skater that Tony sponsors for Birdhouse from Brazil, mm. Philippe. He has no legs. Oh, you know that is? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, yeah, I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, he's cool. And he's like, shredding. I Tony, saw it. And then like I remember like Tony introduced him to like I think someone from Boston actually, who built him legs and like, dude just chilling now, you know, and still like oh, still wow. shredding so hard and like just like inc- so incredible to watch, you know. Mm-hmm. Wow, man. Yeah, because I mean, there's these things like these exoskeletons, you know, and I was I was thinking about this. It's like not even close to you know dealing with what really happens when you don't have a a limb. Uh, just like having my leg broken or my foot. And mm-hmm. not being able to, yeah. it was my first time, and I was already like fifty, and I was like, "Oh my god, like, mm-hmm. what am I gonna do?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's more difficult, and I started thinking about you know certain areas. Like, I was like, oh, "I can't go here." Oh, there's no. You said ramp. people treat you different too, kind of. Mm-hmm. People totally treat you differently, yeah. and um, which is really bizarre. But a lot of people are very sympathetic as far as like, ah, been there. Ah, I know what yeah, you're going yeah, through. yeah, mm-hmm. totally. And, uh, and mm-hmm. I was just like, "Wow, just strangers," but. You know, there were yeah. certain things like, damn, I can't believe, you know, I was thinking of like older people who are like, yeah, um, like this exoskeleton, you know, like you could climb into a suit and then, you know, walk anywhere or go in oh, yeah, yeah. and, and carry those. heavy mm-hmm. bags and things right. like that. Be great for old people. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I, I just think it's, you know, we can go so much further in that if, you know, just keeping away from those terrified people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did, did throughout your life the strangers ask you stuff like yeah so i was thinking when you were t- talking like that like so i like um one of the reasons i stopped wearing prosthetics was basically because i didn't like the extra attention mm-hmm. it gotcha. drew to me so like you know for the majority of my life i wore long sleeves it's like partially hiding but also partially just not wanting to fucking talk about it all the time with, e- with each right. person every day mm-hmm. you know what right. i mean so right. it's just like i just wanted to avoid avoid it you know, yeah. mm-hmm. so I mean, sense. you know, later in life, you know, it's no whatever. I don't, I'm not carrying that the same way, but yeah, mm-hmm. definitely like, you know, when I started playing music, it's like I wanted to be, if judged at all for the music I was making, not for this person with this, who's also making music, you right. know? Yeah. It's funny. Cause like you mentioned, uh, that dude, Roger Gassman and like, he wrote to me last week. I haven't responded yet, but I held, I held something against him for like, the very first review American Nightmare ever had, I think it was for our demo or for yeah, seven. Yeah, magazine back in the day. And I used, I used, I wrote a few times for while you were sleeping or helped out with some That's articles, but like the first time I ever was reviewed in print ever was by this dude, Sean, who worked at Jinx Proof at the time for Roger and he just fucking made fun of me in the <laughs> magazine. And I was like, I just held a beef against him forever because mm-hmm. I was like, you let that be printed. That mm-hmm. was the first time anyone said anything about anything I ever made in life, you know? Right. And I was just like, I'm good, you know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's. It was a long time ago. 
but you know. And so, it's, yeah, so you haven't really talked to him since then? Never. Wow, nope. man. Yeah. Yeah, I just like, the focus on the music, and the, yeah. the music was great, you know what I'm saying? I can like, understand. Like, perform that. everything, mm-hmm. man, like. There's people that come out of nowhere, they'd be like, in February, it's like, it's Black History Month, so. Let's do some stuff with right, you. Right, right, you know, like, yeah. right. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Dude, what right. What to the other part of the year? <laughs> you don't want to talk yeah. about It sucks that like, that's, that's kind of like a knee-jerk response to people who are obviously dealing with, you know, insecurities of their 100%. own. Right. And, and, you know, you give some people a platform to do that. They could do so much good with it, but sometimes it doesn't work out like that. You know, it's, it's I don't know, It's a, maybe it's an age thing as well, like. You know, you it's think, an age you, you think Yeah, but it's hurtful too you because he's, he's a grown man and that's from way back then. It's still stuck with him. Like, right. fuck that. You know what right. I mean? Like, right. it's like that's one thing that could just easily could not been in, you know what I mean, in there. Like, it's just... Yeah, it's, it has nothing to do with the music. Mm. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's, it's a fucked up world, man. It's, yeah, you know. Evil world. I say that a lot of times with yeah. women. They're like, well, it's like, oh, so how's it feel to be a woman in, in rock and roll? Or mm, so right. It's like... I'm a musician. Yeah. You know? yeah. First yeah. off, you know, so. Yeah, there's been a couple before me. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking pay attention. Right, right now it feels pretty fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, thank you for being here, man. Thanks, Thanks for having us. I really liked hanging out with you. And it's, been, it's been a nice group of uh, nice conversations. Um, yeah. any, any, any more questions for these guys? Um, not off the top of my head. No. Yeah. <laughs> Wes, I, re- I really... I'm stoked to like get to know you finally yeah, like later in life because we crossed paths many times and um, I don't know. Yeah, he's been punishing me. Check I just about you. I just yeah, I just I just really love from what I know of you. I really love from what I know of you as a human and what you represent and everything in your life. It's awesome. Back at you, man. Thank you. Thank you. And Dan Smith, obviously, my fucking yeah, love, love you, love all of you. Come on, That's you're right. all you're all inspirations to me. Yeah, that's what I'm and, saying. I want to say one more thing about great that too. Friends, which makes it even I, better. I want to thank you. I want to say one thing about that too. Is like I've, all, um, I love seeing all my friends succeed and do good shit. It inspires me to go harder. You know what I mean? I've always been like that. And I love the community we come from because for me, that's what it was. Maybe it's not for a lot of people. There are haters everywhere, but I love seeing my friends do cool, creative things. It's inspiring. Right on, man. Because we all come from the same place, and obviously we do. You know, punk and hardcore. Ditto. What you say? What? Ditto. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> I love that. I never yeah. understand people uh, hating on people for their success or right. doing cool shit. And I don't know. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, I you touched on it before, but it's like I can't imagine not doing something. Like once you get involved with music, like it just like like you wanted to tattoo, like you wanted to be a part. Like it, just the idea of it, you wouldn't do something never crossed my mind. Like as everyone yeah, here, I mean, you know. Yeah. It's just always about contributing to the what's kept you alive and do you guys feel like we're part of a scene still it's it's interesting like yes and no you know like i don't i don't uh yeah in a in a way i don't i don't that word you never think about it i know what you mean though like but i don't think about like genre ever anymore yeah yeah, yeah. it's more like i I like like later in life now like her 40s and 50s Mm. where you kind of end up meeting everyone who's still around. I think that's the coolest thing. Yeah, I like that you too. Know? Mm-hmm. Still doing something connected yeah. to it somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because people, yeah, people do say that word. Go support the scene and all that stuff. Like, I'm old. I feel like I'm not, I'm like, I still play music, but I'm not involved in a local thing, especially here because, I don't know, it's just, yeah, I course. go to shows when I can, but, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Well, there's definitely, I feel like, what scene do you represent? It's like, hype of the scene. I just think it's bigger. It's yeah. grown, but there's definitely people that, uh, I feel very conservative, you know, as I get older, I'm like, wow, you know, I went to a high school reunion. I was like, okay, this is definitely not my scene. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah. you know, I def- and when I go to a show or whatever, I, de- I feel that even though, you know, this person may be highly in the metal, I feel like he's a part of that scene that I yeah. know I'm familiar with. Which yeah. Which is nice. I think <laughs> there's really important lessons that you can learn early on that can stick with you that really help, you know, it, it helps your life. Yeah. Later on in life, yeah, right, yeah. you know right. what I mean. Like if you tr- if you truly like know them and understand them to be valuable, which a lot of them are, um, I think I think they come in handy. You know, it ke- keeps it keeps you young because yeah. life yeah, does its best to, yeah. to not keep you young. You know, mm-hmm. and, when, and when I think of a scene, I think of the, the younger generation of bands that are booking shows at DIY spots, doing fans, and still there's this new generation of kids, and that's beautiful. Yeah, I, I feel like that. I'm just like an older this. guy that still plays music. 
from that world, from mm-hmm. our world, but I still love and check out oh, yeah. new bands, try yeah. to listen to new stuff and be open minded. It's very inspirational. I'm not a gatekeeper and all that stuff. Like I love yeah. if I hear new stuff, mm. like those young keep my youngsters. ear to the street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Youngsters are doing it. I just well. think the sense of community and be, like knowing that it's important to contribute to it right. is is a healthy thing. You know what I mean? Whether Absolutely. it's like like we we saw in the pandemic, right? It's like you could watch whatever you want on the news and whatever angle and stuff, but you walk outside your door, your neighbor is still your neighbor. And that's, Facts. that's yeah. the most important yeah, relationship sure. that you can have is in your, is in your very close vicinity. Uh, yeah. And so Definitely to me, it was like, yeah, you look out for the people that are around you. And if everyone does that and there shouldn't really be, you right. know, so in theory, very, there shouldn't be very, as very many true. problems. Right. That, that, that freaked me out. But like the news was saying all this shit, then I would go to ear one or go to a store and it would be outside. I'm like, this is, this yeah. is life. But it, it was sad to really see that transformation with the whole media become that because I had so much respect for a lot of the media of the past as far as being yeah, they all lost journalists, mm-hmm. yep. great journalists who were able to write stories that yeah. are very tough that are out there. And I was like, oh, mm. this is so important, journalism, that freedom mm. of the press yep. and everything. And then mm. it's being manipulated. Yep. And, and, uh, it's, it's sad, sad to see it come to yeah. what it is. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah, I was like nervous to go to New York. I was like, I heard all these different things. And when I got there, it was like, yeah. everybody was in the streets. It was just like, mm-hmm. it was just like nothing really changed. It's but the news had me like yeah. so shook to fly and, and oh, somebody's going to freak out on the plane because I saw oh, yeah. the news. Yeah. Maybe the privatization you know I mean? of yep. these news corporations and just becoming so like, this is the side that it's going to take and this is mm-hmm. the side. I mean, with Fox, it really started hardcore with that. You know, like, we're going to be specifically this type mm. of news source. Yeah. Yeah. Done. You know, not really seeing another side, only seeing it as evil and good, you know, yeah. like trying to split. That. And it's just terrifying, you know, that it's become that. Did it feel mm. split on tour in America touring? No. That's what I'm saying. Like, but on mine, <laughs> it feels so divided. Like, it just feels like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I already knew long ago since we've had the ability to, the, the honor to travel so many different places in the world we know it's not like that right so yeah. when we're watching it's like oh yeah you know we're everywhere in the south and texas and florida whatever and it's just it, it's ludicrous you know what they're putting on tv um but it it's, sucks it's, Sad, i mean man. if you're not traveling you're not able to meet people face to face and have those conversations, yeah. conversations yeah. then it's real yeah you know it's mm. it's, it's yeah very very real to them you know I love it. I love having these conversations. Mm. I love it, man. This yeah. is what life's about is talking. So thank you guys for being yeah. West coming back again. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Toby. Part two. Thanks, Derek. Derek. 1000. Word. Um, and yeah, people can find <laughs> you guys on social media and check out what you guys have coming up. Anything coming up, Derek, besides? Uh, just life, man. That's what's coming <laughs> up. Just life. I think this lunch is coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lunch is coming up. Lunch is coming yeah. up. All right. Let me, let me check my notes one more time. Everybody's good. Let's see. Da, da, da. Cool. I'm definitely gonna get hair plugs. That's on my list. I'm sorry for <laughs> that. It's going down. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you all for being here. Thanks. Thank you. Check yeah. out Dan's new book. Hey, guys, thanks for listening. Um, please rate, review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. And whatever platform you are listening to this on, I'm glad you found me. You can rate me and review me on there also. So thank you guys sincerely for the support. I cannot wait for you guys to the next one.